Hi, our next knitted project is a convertible necklace. This pattern has a very different construction to our other necklaces and projects because we're going to use a lace stitch. It's a simple lace stitch, but we should go over the basics of knitting with lace. Now, this project begins like our other projects in that I pre-strung my beads, and I used my backwardy loop cast on to get started. My pattern requires three stitches, and so that's what I have on my project, which I've already got started. So here I have my three stitches on the needle. I've been knitting along on this for a while, but I'm going to show you the pattern, which is yarn over, purl two together, knit one. This you might recognize if you've done lace before it's, is the basic purse stitch but we're only doing one repeat. Now the tricky bit is our beads are going to be slid up against the needle on our very first stitch even before we do that yarn over. So I start out with the bead against my previous knit row and I'm ready to do a yarn over. A yarn over has to be worked always counterclockwise. Sometimes that confuses people. So think about looking at your needle straight on and going counterclockwise around the needle. On the first stitch, it's almost just like tucking it into the needle. Yarn over, purl two together. It is a little bit more awkward to get those purl twos together with wire, so you will go slowly. And then knit one. Stretch them out at the end of the row and turn your work. Now, on this project, I just happened to be knitting again with two different color double-pointed needles to help me know my left from my right, but to remind me to turn my work. Because with this three-stitch project, if you forget to turn your work, if you're working on double-pointed needles, you get a twisty eye cord. So we having the two different color needles will help you do that. This project is different in that we do place a bead every row. So I'm going to slide a bead up again. It rests against the stitch from my last row. And I'm holding it ready to purl after I get that yarn over. So my bead is against my previous stitch. My, my wire is actually coming in front of my needle and then over the needle towards the back. That'll help me do my yarn over real quickly. So the wire is positioned, the bead is positioned, going, going to put my needle in there. And then I just bring my finger to the front to bring the wire to the front. Put my needle through two stitches to do the purl two together. Whoops. and stretch it as you pull it off and 
knit one. You probably be noticed a little bit of struggling with that purl two together. Because the wire is stiff, those purl two togethers will be a little bit more difficult. So go slowly, stretch out the stitches if you need to. I'll do that again. I've placed my bead. I bring my finger forward so that it's wrapping that yarn over. And now I'm positioned to purl two together. And those went a little more smoothly. I'm tugging as I pull it off and I knit my last stitch. I turned my work. And I slide a bead at the very beginning of every row. So yarn over, purl two together, An upward tug as you slip off that purl two together really helps. Knit one. Tug at the end of your row. I'm going to do at least one more. Slide the bead first, put your right hand needle in from the back and then if you bring your finger forward you'll have wrapped your yarn over very easily. Purl two together, knit one. Now you will see as our chain grows Our beads are actually being placed on diagonals to each other. And the purl two togethers form a little chain down the center of our necklace, necklace bracelet because it's convertible. What I like about the convertible necklace is that it lies mu much more nicely against your body compared to other knitted necklaces. It acts more like a chain necklace. So you don't have to do as much tugging and shaping of the necklace to have it lie flat against your body like you do with the knitted gems or the chips and stones necklaces. Now I'm going to keep going until I decide my necklace is long enough and how I'm going to determine the length, uh, rather than getting out my measuring tape, because I want to make sure this necklace is going to be convertible, I'm going to use my wrist and my neck to help me judge the length that I want my necklace to be. If I want it to be a shorter necklace, but convertible, I want it to wrap twice around my wrist. So I'll just check whether it's long enough to do that. And I can just take it off the needle, hold it against my body. I'm just a little bit short. And I could also double check holding it, just hold it against your neck to see whether it goes around your neck the length that you want. If you just use those guidelines, you can get it to fit the length you want because this necklace has no other shaping. You can keep going as long as you want to keep going to make a necklace that is either a short cho choker or princess neckline 
or you can go even longer. If you don't want it to be convertible, you don't have to bother with measuring it against your wrist. You can simply measure against your neck or decide the, the length that you want. Anything be between 16 and 24 inches, I think, in this particular necklace style looks, looks very, very nice. And if you want a bracelet that wraps twice around your necklace, for most people, that would be a 16-inch necklace, which would be a princess neckline choker. If you want it to wrap three times around your wrist, for most people, that's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 22 to 24 inches. But you can decide. And just keep going as long as you want to. So I've decided this is long enough, and I'm going to attach my clasp. I'm going to attach this clasp on the cast-on edge again. Do that side first. And I take my tail and take the bead that was contained in my kit, the little silver finishing bead as it's called. I place that finishing bead on the tail. Then I take my clasp, the ring half of the clasp I'm going to do first. And that slides onto the tail. The tail then comes down through that finishing bead. And also, if I can aim it right away to go through that cast off row, then all I have to do is do the two overhand stitches either side of the finishing bead once, twice. Push that over to the side so that you can have two more stitches on the other side of the finishing bead once, twice. And then I always sort of turn it to the side as I coil a little bit more of the tail underneath the finishing bead. protecting those stitches, making your join a little bit firmer. This method of attaching uh, clasps has worked very well for me. I took note that I rarely need to replace my clasps that I have made on my knitted jewelry compared to some of the clasps that I have from necklaces or bracelets that uh, were strung and were attached with crimp beads. And a, a nice thing, if, if you ever have breakage of a necklace or bracelet, usually that's going to happen at the clasp from, from tugging at it. But it, if it ever breaks at the clasp, if you have a scrap of wire left, you can easily repair your clasps simply by sewing on with a little extra sewing stitches and coiling, and you can repair your jewelry very easily. You don't have to worry about losing beads from the project because they won't go scattering like they will if you have a breakage on a regular strung necklace. So there, I've attached my clasp, and I just have to do just a little bit more and attach my bar on the other side, and I'm going to have a finished convertible necklace.